Okay, we can start. Uh, thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, it is a pleasure to present uh, to this cosmetic audience, and you may think what does an electronic company or a technology company has to do with cosmetics? Well, you know, we have some cases we are going to present, uh, but uh, Philips itself is going undergoing uh, through a tremendous change and trying to move uh, away from being uh, a company that deals with technology to more becoming a company that actually solves consumer issues and uh, addresses consumers' needs. Uh, and they can be, in fact, uh, as already uh, Dana mentioned before, uh, we're looking into technologies also in the area of personal care and cosmetics uh, that may uh, actually be complementary or even substitute uh, uh, current, cosmetic, uh, current cosmetic products. Uh, and in fact, uh, technology now enables us to do a lot more than we can actually even uh, imagine. Uh, but it all starts uh, from a consumer need. Uh, it all starts uh, from the insight uh, that drives that consumer need, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, so I basically introduced this already. Um, so it is important to understand uh, how your insights, uh, how the fundamental needs that you're trying to solve uh, uh, fit uh, the business agenda and the categories you're working in. And we're going to talk, you know, in the case of Philips, uh, how we've managed uh, to, to do that. Uh, and also, uh, it is important to have a process uh, which then can be complemented by creativity uh, and therefore a framework for developing innovation, which is all based on, uh, on the consumers and the consumer insights. Uh, and then we look at the, at the specific uh, case of uh, Crystallize, and uh, Roxanne will take us through uh, a, a cosmetic uh, case on uh, where the insight actually triggered uh, uh, a business opportunity. Um, but first, let me dramatize uh, uh, the issue. Uh, I hope nobody is, caught, is from Kodak in the room. I checked, uh, and it doesn't look like. But however, uh, even if there were any, they know very well what the problem is, because uh, insights uh, are can shape the way the industry actually is moving. A, a shift in technology, in this case, from film camera to digital camera, has fundamentally changed uh, how consumers approach the photography in general. It was not about you know, the, the picture or the quality of the film and the quality of the picture itself. It, it was about easy sharing, immediate viewing, which has shaped, uh, and digital technology has actually helped to shape the, this change. Uh, Kodak, for many different reasons, and good reasons, also because they didn't have the proper technology at the beginning, decided to delay the entry and focus more on film, and you know, having even better films than before, but the market punished, uh, uh, punished them, both on the consumer side, because their business declined, but also this is the stock uh, evolution and the stock price uh, of the company, the value of the company decreased. This is so powerful, understanding what is the insights that motivates your categories, uh, to actually ensure that you continue building value for your business and for, and for the company. Uh, said this, um, two words about Philips. As I mentioned before, a company that is un undergoing a dramatic change. This change started eight years ago, and you may think, yeah, it's, it's a long time. It's actually a very short time uh, to build a new culture. You know, it takes probably 10 to 15 years before we really see the results uh, of what we are trying to do. Uh, but Philips uh, is actually moving uh, in the area of health and well-being uh, and uh, playing with sense and simplicity as a key differentiator uh, versus uh, their competitors. And as mentioned before, simplicity is uh, a damn hard thing to do. Uh, it's, uh, it's a process. It's about understanding what you can take out, in fact, and how, um, how you can actually simplify your proposition and addressing uh, the needs of consumers at the same time. Um, but this is what differentiates, uh, or what we'd like Philips to be differentiated in the market. Uh, and that's what the effort of uh, my department of consumer insights is all about. It's in trying to understand and focus the company on the right opportunities and the right, uh, and the right needs, set of needs. Uh, ultimately, what Philips wants to do is to create a healthier and more sustainable lifestyle for consumers. Uh, and uh, doing this through meaningful innovations, which are really enable our consumers to uh, experience life or experience their categories in a, in, a more rewarding, uh, uh, in a more rewarding way. And of course, we bank on a strong global brand. We are a mono-brand company, apart from some exceptions in, uh, in very specific categories like mother and child care, where we, use the acqui we acquired Avent, and therefore we use the Avent brand, or, or a healthcare where we use the Sonicare brand, which we have also bought um, 
few years ago. Um, and as I said before, moving from you know, a technology company to a consumer-driven and insight-driven company. Uh, this has shaped uh, the way we actually defined the business, uh, the way we defined the categories, and the way we defined the consumers. Uh, for the first time, and this I'm talking now with, my hat, with the hat of a uh, head of strategy for the company, for the first time uh, in the company, we use consumer research uh, to shape uh, the strategy of the company. Uh, we have defined what are the target groups and what domains we want to own, uh, based on consumer research, and we have reclustered our businesses according uh, to the fundamental meaning that they have for our consumers. Now, I'm, going, I'm not going to dwell on the model, but basically what we, we've done, we've clustered it into four main groups, which is uh, uh, interactive living, uh, the former consumer electronics uh, platforms, uh, home living, everything that has to do with helping uh, uh, the life of consumers at home, um, personal care, self-explanatory, uh, and uh, um, health, health, um, healthy, style, healthy life, which aims at uh, improving uh, and preventing uh, healthcare issues and improving your current uh, health state. Uh, and we try to redefine the businesses uh, not as the industry calls them or the, or, or the way the categories are called uh, in general by the industry, but the way the consumers look and uh, how the consumers uh, un, uh, use our products and, and cluster, their pro cluster them. Um, as I said before, uh, innovation and insights is a process, and this is how uh, we approach it. It's a very simple funnel process. Uh, we start from a cloud, uh, uh, a cloud of ideas. Um, is there? Yeah, pointer. Uh, where at the beginning uh, we generate ideas, uh, which we then, uh, sorry, too fast, uh, which we then uh, screen through the through the process, uh, through um, gates, fundamental hard gates, uh, where uh, the ideas get tested through uh, consistent methodology across the world, uh, and they get, uh, uh, if they get a go ahead, then they pass to the next stage. So we start from insights, uh, then uh, we move what to the concept, which we call in Philips the value proposition. Uh, then there is a product development part, and then of course a launch. We then measure loyalty uh, through NPS, so net promoter score system, and uh, that feeds back into generating the new insights uh, at the beginning of the process. But now, the process itself doesn't mean anything, not even the gates or the tools. What is important uh, is that you, continu you keep continuing, a very continuing to have a very close consumer contact uh, uh, throughout the whole process. Uh, this means that we, we do enrich this process by going back to consumers uh, through uh, various qualitative uh, uh, techniques. We use uh, an, an ongoing online community, which is uh, uh, owned by Philips, uh, even though it's managed by an agency, uh, which helps us uh, to actually keep this consumer intimacy going throughout the process. Um, we do uh, use uh, ethnography, or even better, netnography today, which enables us uh, to actually go through uh, the internet uh, uh, and uh, manage uh, uh, this large uh, amount of the information in a way which is meaningful to the definitions and the projects that we are, that we are doing. Uh, and, uh, of course, we do have a lot of contacts with consumer labs uh, and, uh, um, and uh, classic uh, qualitative techniques. So it's a disciplined approach, but a lot of consumer feedback goes into, into the various phases. Um, now, we start to, I mentioned that we have an online community. It's called Sensorium. Uh, the advantage of online community uh, is deployed here. You have, of course, you pose questions to consumers and you receive a feedback. But what you can do also is observe uh, what the consumers are posting to us. So the feedback, the spontaneous feedback that you get from consumers, which sometimes triggers interesting and new ideas. But what's, what even more interesting is to understand how consumers dialogue among themselves about the topics that, of discussion that we, uh, we propose within the community. And that is also a very powerful source of information. Uh, and uh, this results basically in, uh, in close consumer contact, uh, where you really can actually uh, maintain, even from your desktop, uh, maintain a very close uh, uh, connection to, uh, to the community and therefore the consumers that are talking about your categories and your, your products. 
Uh, the community is structured uh, as such. We have uh, basically two communities, a male and a female community. Uh, we sometimes pull projects together. It really depends on the nature of the categories uh, or, or the questions we are uh, we're dealing with. It's around 900 uh, members uh, across uh, uh, the most relevant countries uh, for Philips, which is Europe, uh, North America, and uh, the BRIC markets. Um, it is in English. Uh, but we are developing also uh, local language capabilities, uh, particularly for China and Brazil. Um, and uh, uh, of course, what we do, we pose, uh, uh, we pose questions, uh, so we test the prototypes, uh, we test ideas, uh, uh, we test um, communication materials, uh, concepts. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, we ask them also to do some uh, some work for us, like uh, explain what their day looks like uh, regarding, for instance, health and well-being, what are the practices uh, they use, uh, how they you know, use a certain category or, or so on. Uh, we do uh, tap into new emerging trends by observing the behavior uh, of consumers among themselves and uh, members among themselves. Uh, uh, we can derive uh, some interesting uh, new trends or micro-trends. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we do get feedback on, uh, uh, on the classic uh, marketing materials. Um, this generates insight, but uh, ultimately what is a great insight? So this is an excerpt uh, of a paper that Philips has done together with the uh, Brain Juicer, a uh, market research agency, uh, that defines uh, what are the key drivers for uh, uh, successful insights. And basically there are five uh, core uh, uh, criteria uh, that define a great insight. First of all is the freshness, so talking about a topic or an issue in a new uh, and different way. Uh, second of all is the excitement, so generate that idea of, yes, this is a wow effect. It, has, uh, it is a great idea, which, by the way, is true and relevant uh, for, uh, for me and for my lifestyle. Uh, and, of course, has to be expressed in a clear way. And it's actually, these are actually the importance, they're ranked by the order of importance. In fact, basic insights are, have to be clear and relevant, but this is not enough uh, for development. For being a good insight, you have to add also truth and excitement. So uh, bring that you know, newness, uh, that, uh, um, that, that element of, uh, uh, of wow effect which can make an insight good. But to have an excellent insight, you also have to add uh, a really new perspective, a new uh, reshape in the way consumers are defining uh, their issues. Um, we then, uh, together with Brain Choose, have developed uh, uh, a model uh, or a validation tool, uh, which is very, <coughs> technically speaking, it's very simply, uh, it's based on two, um, two main uh, domains, one the domain of resonance, uh, which is the, the composite index of uh, excitement and relevancy, and the domain of edge, which is about freshness, uh, truth, and clarity. Um, we, uh, f through several uh, attempts, uh, we discovered that these two um, these two axes are the ones that actually help us to scatter much better uh, the insights uh, throughout the map, and therefore uh, it, it is more relevant and more polarizing to actually select uh, the, most, uh, uh, the most prominent and the most uh, promising insights. Um, of course, you want to be in the high quadrant where you have a high resonance and a high edge. For us, actually, the validation uh, gate is in the top uh, quintile of this, uh, of this quadrant. Uh, and this is where insights are really telling something to the consumers that make them uh, uh, feel that, that they are understood, that they, that they learn something new uh, about what they are uh, experiences, experiencing. In the other quadrants, of course, insights, particularly in, this qua in these two quadrants uh, on the sides, yes, that's, it means, yes, it's, uh, uh, it is, I understand the issue, but it's nothing really new. Uh, in this case, it's, yeah, it's great insight, but it's not exactly for me. In these two quadrants, you can still rework on the insight, adding either newness uh, or uh, reshaping the way uh, the insight is, uh, is structured, or uh, adding the relevance uh, to, uh, to the insight. Of course, uh, when you are in the bottom quadrant, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's, not a good, uh, it's not a good platform uh, for development. Uh, and of course, we do this uh, across all of the countries where we test, which is mainly, uh, mainly uh, North America, Western Europe, and the BRIC countries, essentially. And uh, we database it, and therefore, we have a pretty good understanding, a pretty good tool to actually move forward on relevant uh, uh, consumer needs. Uh, and I will now pass my uh, word to uh, Roxanne, uh, which will take us through actually uh, an, a, a business application of uh, uh, of what I just mentioned. Thank 
can I just move the computer to the other, to over here? Only because I have this, because I didn't wear the right outfit. I could to help you. <laughs> I could help you. Even if, because so then I can stand, just have my notes, but I have to hold this too. We can put it on the floor. I don't even care. Yeah. Thank you for having me and for wanting to listen to me. Um, also, um, thanks, Federico. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to show you with Philips Crystallize is um, a little bit about how we took the case study and we built this case for a proposition and got the product in the market in a new way, something adjacent to one of our core areas. But also thanks to Daria because she was one of she is one of my mentors and an old boss of mine. So it was apropos. But the big sustainability in the U.S. Get rid of the, the grocery bags. In Europe, everybody takes their own bag and nobody has a problem with it. Or you pay 20 cents. That's that's my big thing. People ask me what I miss about the U.S. Living in Amsterdam, and I say service, of course. Nothing against the Dutch, um, as you know. Yes, uh, AV. We'll see if it works. Um, but um, then uh, what I don't miss is the waste, big portions in plastic bags, uh, which is something that um, it made me think a little differently in that sense. Rather than looking at what I miss, let's look at what I don't miss, and that's a big thing. Um, OK, so I'm going to talk about Crystallize. Crystallize is, as Federico said, what do we do? What, do we, you know, what does Philips have to do with being in the beauty industry or anything like that? Um, well, oop. why is that first? This one. Oh, this one? Nope. Which one, Federico? This one. I know I work for a technology company. Bad. I go, I go to the Mac Genius Bar and say, help. I don't give them my business card. Here's what I got. I've been there about a year and a half, and I walked into a proposition. Um, I had been introduced to it when I was at Walgreens, but I walked into this big clunky camera that was this big, and this is what it would tell me. So how do we take Federico's process? And you know, processes are good in some ways for Philips, and sometimes they can be a hindrance, so we have to look at how to adapt. Fortunately, I'm in the market of Philips that I can adapt a little bit. But we started with this um, camera. So if we want to go to the next slide, keep going. Um, we looked at insights. And when, when Federico just spoke about the wow factor and the you know, uniqueness, just keep clicking through these. Um, we looked for our, our customer, and we really did talk to our customer. I know we all say that we do, but as a, as a previous true only marketeer, we don't want to hear it sometimes. And I'm there, I've been there, and I'm still there at times. But we do even more so now. It was a little disappointing, the very few people Twittering, but that the beauty industry is probably one of the last to want to get on the digital bandwagon and also really listen to our customers that way. I think we're doing it, and we're trying to be responsible about it. But what we did at um, Philips here with looking at this proposition of a camera that measures skin, we said, is it unique? That was the fresh idea. Was it something different? We are different than any other device that's out there in the market that measures skin. Um, we're comparable to something in the medical community as well. And we have um, Dr. Nick Lowe who has attributed that and wrote a white paper, which has been picked up by the AAD and the BAD, the British Academy, and talking about the uniqueness of this camera and the credibility of the camera. So we knew from that, from the uniqueness and the wow of the piece of equipment, there was something new and different. But with our consumer, it's probably a little hard to see, it says, I wish I could get some impartial guidance on what the best products are for maintaining my appearance. That said to us, we need to start listening to our consumers. As we're all competitors at some point in our lives, but the consumer doesn't look at it that way. They walk into a retailer and say, I want a new moisturizer. So they don't look at it that way. But some of these insights, and I could attribute the first one to be the relevant factor, the second one in um, efficiency to be the clear factor in, an, in Federico's category. We called them something different, but in his insights, that's what we did in looking at these relevant consumer insights. You can't just have uniqueness because somebody said to me in Federico's group, you can have tuna flavored yogurt, that's unique, but nobody wants it. So, 
um, we looked at all these variables, and these were all the insights that came through on our proposition. So next screen. If you look in Phillips, you always talk about, are you in the top right corner? And we are. Um, actually, when we looked at our value proposition, and that's what we call it in Phillips, um, what came out of it is a consumer saying, it would be great to understand my skin better and the way it changes so I don't waste money on the wrong products. That's really something sustainable now, too. The recession, this was done before the recession. So now it's even more relevant. But what's interesting about this, this proposition scored um, in some areas and uniqueness better than Sonicare, which is a huge brand for us in the consumer lifestyle sector. So we're very thrilled about it as far as that goes. Um, so we did have this unique element, but we had all the other elements along with it, too, in the efficiency, the impartial guidance, and evaluation. But unique was clearly in the top right corner, which meant the wow factor for us. So we knew we had something. Next. Um, I am going to, this is now what the camera looks like. It'll eventually evolve to be even smaller. But we could either do the, the you know, as we all know, what Phillips knows, box shifting put it in a box, send it to a market, and sell it. But that's not the way the consumer was talking about, and that's not the way the consumer buys beauty products. So we looked at an end-to-end -end consumer proposition, and that's what those insights told us. The consumer wanted to look at their skin. We also know three out of four consumers have judged their skin as the wrong skin type, but also with those consumers, they they don't want to be talked at anymore. They want to be talked with you. They want to develop products with you, and they want to know about that. They don't want to be preached to. They're getting savvy, and they know that more and more people are advertising, and that leaves their position. So they were looking for something different as well. So that's when we came up to the skin imaging service. Next. Um, where is our video? Shouldn't it be in here? OK. Um, so we looked at. A couple propositions. The first that we we talk about new business models, and in innovation we talk about um, with Philips. It was hard for Philips to look at healthcare as a third of our business, and we do MRIs and a lot of the um, equipment in a hospital. So immediately they wanted to go to the med spot proposition, and we tested that, and guess what? It didn't resonate. So they quickly. You know, I was very impressed throughout and said, fine, get us another business model. This, this proposition is too unique to not do something with it. And that's what we did. So if we look at this one more thing before we go and I show you what Crystallize is, we look at that beauty we know is an emotional category. Um, but 85% of purchases, and this was from a study by Allure, are more planned. And that's because of the internet. We know that. People are researching at online. Totalbeauty.com, the largest um, website in the US that reviews all the beauty products, we, we did an alliance with them. So when a consumer, and I'll show you this in a minute, when a consumer gets a product that might be right for them, it also tells the, view, the review that's in Totalbeauty.com. Now this can be a big threat to some of the brands. Fortunately for us, in our original testing, it hasn't been a problem, and it's been a plus, and not a negative if it's a bad review, because the consumer then will go home and read that review and look and say, oh, well, it wasn't the right product for them. So that's why it got a bad review. So little things like that in this proposition also helped make it more unique and innovative, bringing in other alliances and third-party people to add credibility to Philips as technology in the beauty arena. Next. Um, so we looked at our ecosystem and how we wanted to talk to the consumers. So we looked at retailers. It's a B2B. I need to sell into retailers. And right now we are in Dwayne Reed in the New York. Um, we're also in Beauty Collection out on the West Coast. And um, we will be going into all the Dwayne Reed Look Boutiques, which they're changing the game as well from an innovation standpoint. They looked at what do the consumers want in the drugstore market, and they want they certainly don't want um, an environment that is like a department store, but they wanted some type of environment that was nicer than just aisle one in Walgreens when you walk down aisle one. So they're looking at changing that game there, and I know some people are threatened by Dwayne Reed going into that and getting those brands, but they're doing very well with it. We also looked at skincare brands, and based on our business model, we're a Google business model. Um, brands that are in there for actually very nominal fees. They're all competitive brands in there. So when you go and have your diagnosis, 
um, you will get 15 different brands that might be right for you for a certain category and product. And you know, for moisturizers, obviously one of the biggest categories, there's competitive brands. The consumer in their back of their mind still knows what brands are there, and some people are threatened by that, that, oh, well, what if they pick a brand that's not mine? Well, the consumer also said, we want impartial guidance. We want to know what's out there and right for us. We'll pick what we want. And the other advantage that we have is under the consumer proposition, they can track their history so they can see if the product works. That's scary to a lot of people, but guess what? Fortunately, so far, the products are working. The consumers are seeing positive insights from that. Um, you want to go to the next slide? Now, if you click in there, um, I will show you what Crystallize is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, so this is a little confusing. Sorry, guys. Really great skin starts with really knowing your skin. Surprisingly, research shows that 75% of women are unsure of their skin type. And with thousands of products launched every year, finding the right products that work for you can be a real challenge. Philips Crystallize helps you to understand your unique skin, how it changes, and what you need to get the results you want. In one short consultation, the Crystallize camera accurately and reliably images your skin. These images are analyzed to evaluate your skin type, redness, pigmentation, and texture. Based on your results, we recommend products that may be appropriate for your skin from a variety of different brands. Crystallize isn't just a consultation, it's also an active online community. At crystallize.com, you can review your results, track your skin progress, and use our smart search technology to find customized skin solutions. Get expert insights from our Skin Pro panel. Discover the latest information on trends, products, and treatments available. Share real life skin stories and learn from people just like you. Better knowledge, smarter choices, more beautiful skin. Before you buy, crystallize. Before we go to the next slide, um, I'm trying to make up time, so I've got two more minutes. I did it in 10. Um, and literally, what we did, um, Frederica was talking about the sensorium, and we went out to the sensorium, got a lot of feedback. We also did our own testing through another, you know, Brain Juicer and Ipsos as well. But with the sensorium, we did a project called uh, Skin Secrets. And right now online, we um, got people's homemade remedies. You talk about simplicity, Daria. Um, people putting honey with sugar and putting it on their face. So it's really about people uploading right now, and we, we're all about videos. We're not about words, even though I have a PowerPoint. Um, on our online community, it's all about video and people uploading their skin secrets. We also have something going on with TotalBeauty.com right now doing the exact same thing. Um, so that's another place where we listen to the consumer and look what they want, and then you know we had a winner, who brought them into the store, um, and cri crystallized them. Next screen. So then from a business model, oh, sorry. We looked at where do we take this opportunity, and obviously I come from not only some mass um, direct sale, but I also come from the department store channel. And that's something that's enticing um, to somebody who's not been in it. Here, I'll... Okay, I think we only have this. We're technically challenged, we're from Philip. Um, so what we looked at is how to go and where our sweet spot is. And right now, thanks, Federico, our sweet spot is going to be in the specialty channel. I, I classify Dwayne Reed now. Um, I lived in New York. I never would have, I didn't have a choice but to shop in Dwayne Reed. And as the president said, I never thought I'd work here. And I said, I never thought I'd do business with you. Um, but here we are, and they're a great partner. And they're almost more of a specialty channel as well. Um, you know, looking for the open cell environment, something where a consumer can shop, a, s a consumer can wander and use their own time and their own knowledge from the research, 85% have already looked at what they're doing. Next screen. Um, hold on, we have another video. So right here is what I'm going to show you is the increases. We're talking with Dwayne Reed as far as what we're doing. You can go ahead. And... 
and I'll pause in a minute. Dwayne Reed is actually celebrating our 50th anniversary this year in New York City. We're an iconic New York brand and we're on every street corner. So we've got 250 stores in the greater New York area and 160 stores right on the island of Manhattan. We see about 1.6 to 1.7 million customers through our stores every week. In these stores specifically, our little boutique stores, our customer counts typically around 15 to 20, 25,000 customers every week that go through these locations. Crystallize does so many things for our stores. Uh, not only does it make us a destination, there's nobody like it in the city or in our general marketplace that has a tool like this that has such depth and um, I think provides such interesting information to women. It really does help to build that relationship with our beauty advisors. Hi, how are you? It Hi. also helps to form those personal relationships and customer loyalty. I see so many women come in and, you know, they say, well, you know, I used this in the past. And I say, you know, what's the reason you're using a product that's clear enough for your skin type? And they're like, well, I didn't know. So like, a lot of my customers now, you know, they go through the analysis, they see that what, what their skin needs, they get the right product, and then they come back. I definitely thought I have a dry skin, and after this experience, I find out that my skin is actually on a combination side. I will definitely follow up, and I will come back and find out more about my skin. I was very confused. I was looking at the products on the wall, and the Look Boutique manager came over. She helped me. She analyzed my skin, and she gave me a clear path to go on instead of me trying to figure out what to do. Philips Crystallize is an excellent marketing tool because it's quick, it's reliable, and you can create a history. So this way the customer has something to go back to and refer to progress and how her skin is improving. My customers, um, all in all, they love the service, they love the fact that it's just unbiased. It's not me just saying, okay, well your skin is this, so you need to get this product. They're a little more involved. They say, well, you know what, this is my skin, I want to work on this, my issue is this, I want to click on that. They love it, and the fact that they get that little printout, it's like something that's a little bit of a memento. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Our target for Crystallize is to build loyalty and increase basket size. It has been such a wonderful partnership to have somebody come to you with a tool and really work with a retailer on the best way to execute it in the stores. I look forward to more collaboration and understanding from our small test of six stores how we can scale this up and get into more stores so we can repeat the uh, results. I won't even go to the last slide. That's okay, I'll just recap it. So just quickly, where are we now um, with this and the insights? When you, when you saw this in the store, um, it was really about a mouse and a keypad. It's a touch screen now. Um, everything's hidden, it's a new installation. Um, so we are there. We're, um, our Q4 milestones, and you know, I still have to go to the board, um, we're, we'll be in 100 doors. Um, right now we're rolling out into all of the 70 um, Look Boutiques uh, with Dwayne Reed. The biggest, we have um, over 20 brand partners. Um, we have 15,000 registered users in three short months. And um, our daily online traffic is about 1,500 plus unique visitors. So we're gaining a lot from our alliance with Total Beauty along with the consultations as well. So it's been very profitable um, for us in here. We're also showing about a 36% increase um, in the department store when they use Crystallize. We're doing about eight consultations a day per door. And then we're also um, looking from a positive, we just did an event where we linked with some of the brands in our database and we had a 47% increase in that store for that day. And this was a no scheduled appointments, just grabbing people you know, off the street. So um, it's been a very good and positive effect for us and uh, with the partnership as we roll out, but also in that we really listen to the consumers and still are in all the updates we do. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not sure we have time for questions. Okay, because yeah. I know we had to make up some time. No. Yeah, no. Darius. Does the, um, the woman who uses the thing to help the customers, does she work for Dwayne Reed or for Crystallize? For Dwayne Reed. And you educate her? Yes, yeah, we spend a lot on education, probably why, you know, um, coming from the Clinique brand, um, we've spent a lot of money on education. We do have somebody that roams the stores and goes in to at least one a day, if not more. Um, and helps them. So any online training of somebody that hasn't been there or, you know, in the beginning we had a few glitches, so anything like that. Any of the software updates, because every month we have a new slew of software updates. Um, you know, one of the things we heard from consumers and from the beauty advisor was they didn't care about pricing. 
which was, we had prices on every product in the beginning. So we took that out. Um, that was something that I would never have thought of. I mean, I, that was a, a huge, um, the BAs wanted it, of course, for their own reasons. But um, even the consumers said they didn't care. So yeah, it is a Duane Reed person. Anything else? Yeah. Sure. Sorry. So just a question about the online community that you have that is like a creative community where the consumer is so involved. Two questions, um, if, it's, if you can answer. When did you start really to build that community? Is it something that you manage internally or do you go through an agency for that? And then how do you manage the kind of uh, ID generation or property of the creation, if something come, I mean, what is the link? Is there like kind of a, let's say that somebody comes with a great ID, do you, is it the idea of the person or it, does it become the something that belongs then to Philip? So how do you? Yeah. Well, the, the, the first question has, uh, has a very easy answer. <laughs> the second, not so much. Uh, we started uh, the community five years ago uh, it is managed through an external agency uh, for the recruitment purposes and also the management of the community. Of course, as you can, imagine, as you can imagine, the recruitment on a worldwide basis needs some specific expertise. So it's all in the quality of the brief that you give to the agency uh, that will define also the output that, uh, that you, will, uh, you will receive. Uh, the agency that does it for us is CommuniSpace, is a, lead, is a leading agency, in fact, in managing, in managing uh, communities. Uh, and uh, we do get a lot of value from the agency itself as well because uh, not only is what we observe directly by, by being present in the community events, uh, but it, it is also on, on the summarization and, and, and the, uh, the insight generation uh, that also where the agency helps uh, to uh, distill uh, the materials and, uh, and br bring to light what is most interesting. Um, when ideas are consumer generated, uh, until now, we didn't have anything really break through like a new, completely new idea that wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't available to us before. So we haven't encountered really this uh, proprietary right uh, issue. Uh, what m the main uh, contribution of the community has, has more been in the areas of in incremental improvements uh, to, our, to our ideas. And the way we manage it is, is we give credit to the consumers to the specific individual, uh, and we then involve and keep the, the person updated uh, on uh, uh, the journey that this uh, insight and then proposition will, uh, will have in the company. And that is actually at this, uh, at this stage sufficient uh, to uh, keep them motivated uh, and also to, to, to make them feel involved into, into the activities uh, that Philips does with, uh, with their input. No, not specifically. It's more, uh, it's more, you know, public recognition in the, in the community. Uh, it is sometimes a personal uh, recognition by sending them the prototype home. Uh, if, you know, if they, uh, if he had contributed to.